Welcome back everybody to another Swift programming tutorial. This is part nine of our basic series and in this tutorial we're going to be going over dictionaries. A quick definition. A dictionary stores key value pairs of the same type in the form key value. So this is the form here. Values are associated with unique keys. You use a dictionary when you need to look up values based on their identifier. Similar to a real dictionary is used to look up the definition for a word. Dictionaries do not have a specified order. However, if needed, there are ways to display items as sorted by key or value. We have a whole bunch of examples to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. To create a dictionary with implicit types, you can use code like this. Okay, so we start out with the reserved word or the keyword var, which is short for variable. Then we give our dictionary a name. Then we use the single equal sign for assignment. And then inside the square brackets, we put our key value pairs. And this would be the key. And after the colon, you put your value. Okay? To create a dictionary with explicit types, you can use code like this. And the difference here is after the variable name, we use a colon, and then inside the square brackets, we put our types. Okay, so the type for the key is string, then we use a colon, and the type for the value is double. So you can see that the key types here, 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 and here are strings, and then after the colon, we put our values and the types for those here, 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 and here are doubles. So if you ever need to access the keys or the values of a dictionary, one way to do that looks like this. Okay, so we've just put this inside of a print to display the keys and the values. And the main syntax you want to pay attention to here is this syntax to access the keys and this syntax to access the values. So you just reference the name of the variable, like in this example, and then you use a dot and then you type out keys for the keys, and for the values, you type out values for the values. Now, as we mentioned, in this case, we've just put these inside of a print to display, and we've also put this syntax inside of an array. So let's go ahead and print this and show you how we can access specifically just the keys in this example and specifically just the values in this example. Let's run it. Okay, so our first print, we print out the keys, and you can see down here in the console here, inside of an array, we have just the keys for dictionary 2. 5K, half marathon, 10K, and marathon. Now, remember in our original definition for dictionary, we mentioned that dictionaries do not have a specified order. So that's why this order here, when we display them, is not necessarily going to be the same as the order that we have typed out here. Our next print here, we wanted to display just the values from our dictionary to here, and you can see those in our console here. And once again, they're displayed, but not necessarily in the order that you have typed them out. Okay, so that's a quick example of how to access the keys and or just the values from a dictionary. To create an empty dictionary, you can use code like this. So once again, you use your var reserved word or keyword, give your dictionary a name, use your single equal sign for assignment, and then inside square brackets state your types for the keys and the values. And remember to put an empty set of round brackets at the end. Another way looks like this. And the main difference here is we have used a colon, and then we state our types inside square brackets. And then we use a single equal sign to assign an empty set of square brackets with the colon to symbolize an empty dictionary. Next up here, let's go over an example of how to access elements of a dictionary using your subscript syntax. So here we have created a dictionary, dictionary 5, with the key value pairs A1, B2, C3, D4, E5. Now let's say that we want to access this first value, value 1. We're going to go ahead and put this in a print to display, and to access that value, we reference dictionary 5. Then we use our square bracket subscript syntax, and we use our key to pull out the value for that key. So we're going to use key A, and for right now, 
you can kind of ignore this syntax, but this just helps us get rid of a warning. And basically we use two question marks to put in a default message or a default value just in case that key A is not in dictionary five. But since we have used our dictionary five and the square bracket or subscript syntax, and we put in our unique key A, which corresponds to one, when we run this, we should get back the value one for key A. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see we get back one, which is what we expected. Next up, let's go over how to add items to a dictionary. So here we have created our empty dictionary and we want to add two key value pairs, one with the key value pair pi and its corresponding number, and another for the E constant and its corresponding number. Now, since we created an empty dictionary here, to add those items, we just reference the dictionary that we want to add them to, and then inside the square bracket or subscript syntax, we create our keys, and then we assign our values. So let's go ahead and run this, but let's comment out this print and let's run it and you can see dictionary six which we put in our print here now contains the two key value pairs that we added with the pi and its corresponding number here and the e constant and its corresponding number here okay so that's an example of how you can add items to a dictionary in this example, let's go over how you can append several elements to a dictionary similar to combining dictionaries. So here we have dictionary seven with the key value pair A1, and then we have dictionary eight with the key value pairs B2 and C3. Now in this case, what we want to do is we want to add the items from dictionary eight to dictionary seven. Now to do that, we use a for loop and we loop through the keys and the values of dictionary eight. And then here we reference dictionary seven and we put those keys and values from dictionary eight into dictionary seven. And to do that, we just use the square bracket subscript syntax and we put the K in the square brackets and then we assign the values. And that will end up adding the items from dictionary eight to dictionary seven. Let's go ahead and run this. So we used a print to display the values of dictionary seven and you can see before, it just contained a one. And then we used a for loop to add the values of dictionary eight. And you can see now dictionary seven contains all three key value pairs. If you're interested in another way to do what we did here, you can use code like this. Now we won't get into this code too much in this tutorial, but we will do a tutorial on how this works in the near future. Next up, let's go over how to remove an element from a dictionary. So here we have dictionary nine with the key value pairs A1, B2, C3, D4, E5. And let's say that we want to remove this key value pair here, E5. One way to do that is to reference the dictionary variable name, dictionary nine, and then inside the square bracket, put in the key, and then use a single equal sign to assign the value nil, okay? So let's go ahead and run this and show you what we get. Okay, so before we had five key value pairs, A through E and one through five, and you can see down here in the console, even though they're out of order, the key value pair E5 has now been removed. Another way to remove a key value pair from a dictionary looks like this. So you just use the dictionary name and then a dot to access the remove value function. And inside the round brackets, you type out four key, a colon, and then you put in the key for the pair that you want to remove. So this should remove the key value pair D4. So let's go ahead and run this. And in this example, we remove the key value pair E5. And then here we remove the key value pair D4. So now our dictionary, you can see here, just contains the remaining key value pairs A1, B2, and C3. Next up, let's go over how you could change or update elements in a dictionary. So here we have dictionary 10, and this dictionary contains shopping list items. So we have our key value pair with the title shopping list item, and the item that we want is a frozen pizza. And then we have another key value pair with the quantity and the actual quantity. So our shopping list item is frozen pizza, and we want one frozen pizza. Now let's say we wanna change that quantity from a one to a two. One way you can do that uses this type of code. 
So we use the dictionary name. Then in the square bracket subscript syntax, we put in our key, and then we assign our new value. So instead of one, we want two frozen pizzas. Let's go ahead and run this. And you can see down here in the console, our dictionary 10, the quantity that we wanted to change has been changed. Next up, let's say that you wanted to count the items in a dictionary. To do that, you can just reference your dictionary name and then use a dot and then type out count. So we can see that this dictionary contains five key value pairs. Let's go ahead and run this. We should get back five. And we get back five in the console. We're good to go. Next up, let's say that you wanted to find the smallest and or largest numbers in a dictionary related to its values. So here we have dictionary 12, which just has the planets and their number of moons. Now remember, this is the key and this is the value. So to find the min and max for the values, we reference the dictionary and then we use a dot and then we type out values. And then depending on whether you want the smallest or largest, then you use a dot and you type out min or you type out max. Now once again, just kind of ignore this for now. We will be going over this syntax and this helps get rid of a warning just in case what we're looking for is not in this dictionary. But let's go ahead and comment this out and let's run our code. And before we look at what's in the console, we can see that the minimum is zero and the maximum is 67. And that is what we get in the console for our answers. We're good to go. Next up, Let's go over a quick example of how to iterate over or through a dictionary. So here we have dictionary 13 with the key value pairs A1, B2, C3. Now one way to iterate through these uses a for loop with this syntax here. So we say for KV, which is short for key value. So we say for key value in dictionary 13. Then we use our curly brackets and inside the curly brackets we use a print and we just simply use the keys and the values that we iterated through, and this will display those key value pairs. So let's go ahead and run this, and you can see we get our key value pairs down here in the console. Next up, let's say that you wanted to add together or sum the elements of a dictionary. So what we want to do is we want to add together all these values, here, here, and here. Now to do that, we can use this code. And we went over an example of this in our last tutorial on arrays. But basically to sum the elements in this example, we start out with a start point of zero. We assign that to the sum and that will hold our running total and eventually the sum of all of those values. Then we use a for loop here and we iterate through the values of our dictionary here. So it will look at this value here, here, and here. And then we use this syntax to add those values to the sum variable each time it encounters a new value. So the first time through, it'll add this number. And then the second time through, it'll add this number. And the third time through, it will add this number. And at the end, the sum will give us the total of all three of these numbers. And before we print this out, these numbers are the approximate populations of each of these states. So this should give us the total population of California, Texas, and Florida all added together. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so you can see down here in the console we get our answer. And it's a little bit hard to tell exactly what that is without the thousands separators, but we get 89 million. Okay, so just remember the key parts of this syntax is we reference our dictionary, and then we use a dot to access the values, which will access these numbers. And then we just use our typical start point of zero, then we use a for loop to loop through those values, and then we use this syntax, which I like to think of as a running total, that will add those all up together and give us a final sum. In this example, what we want to do is test a dictionary to see if it contains a specific element. So here we have our dictionary 15 with the key value pairs A1, B2, C3. And don't worry too much about this if let, for now, we'll go over that more when we go over optionals. The key syntax you want to pay attention to is here, where we reference dictionary 15, and then inside the square bracket subscript syntax, we put the key that we want to test to see if it's in that dictionary. Okay, so the full syntax looks like this. If let A, 
that a is the key is equals dictionary 15 key a inside the curly brackets display a message that say a is in the dictionary then we use an else if it's not in the dictionary and inside those curly brackets use a print to display the message a is not in the dictionary so let's go ahead and run this and you can see down here in the console we get a is in the dictionary now let's change this a to say a d and in this case now we should get back this message a is not in the dictionary so let's go ahead and run it and we get back what we expected a is not in the dictionary now another way to do this uses that double question mark syntax that we saw earlier so let's go ahead and try that out let's say that we want to test for the key value pair c3 so let's use a print let's reference dictionary 15 use our square brackets syntax and let's put in the key c now you're going to see that we're going to get a warning here and let's use the first option which uses the double question mark syntax and let's put in a default value of a string that says not available let's comment out these prints and now let's run this and you can see we get back three which is the value associated with the key c now if we change this c to an a c is no longer available so now we should get back not available let's run it and we get back not available okay moving on to our next example here we want to check a dictionary to see if it's empty so here we have created our dictionary we can clearly see that it is not empty but to check to see if it's empty we can use this syntax here so we use an if else statement and then we use dictionary 16 a dot and then we use is empty now if it's empty we should get back this message dictionary 16 is empty otherwise we'll get back this message dictionary 16 is not empty let's go ahead and run it and you can see we get back the correct message dictionary 16 is not empty because it has several key value pairs now if we go ahead and change this to an empty dictionary And now we run it you can see now we get back the message dictionary 16 is empty because it is now empty okay so in this example here basically we just wanted to show you that you can put in different types of key value pairs other than just your single item key value pair that we have shown so far in this tutorial so in this example we have two cities and then we have their corresponding latitude and longitude values. So the keys would be Chicago and San Diego, and the values we've put inside of an array would be here and here, and those are the latitude and longitudes that correspond to those cities. Okay, so that's all we have for this Swift tutorial on dictionaries. We will be doing many more Swift tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.